Late in the Sui dynasty, Emperor Young grew increasingly decadent. Excessive taxation bred widespread frustration. In 611, the emperor insisted on sending troops to conquer Gogalea on the Korean peninsula. This ignited the anger of the people who had long been oppressed under his rule. Revolts broke out across the empire. Lee Yuan, the governor of Taeyuan, could not gain favor from Emperor Yang. His second son, Li Shimin, persuaded him to rebel. In less than six months, their troops exceeded 200,000 men. In March 618, Emperor Yang was killed and the Sui dynasty ended. In May, Li Yuan declared himself emperor and founded the Tang dynasty. Despite his great military accomplishments, Li Shimin was not named crown prince. However, only a man of talent and ambition could rule the empire. Li Jian Chang and Li Yun Ji sensed danger when they passed through the Xuanwo Gate. But it was too late. Li Shimin shouted out to them. In a panic, Li Yun Ji attempted to shoot him. But in his flustered state, he was unable to, failing three times to draw his bow. Li Shimin calmly pulled out his bow and killed Li Jian Chang with a single shot. A scuffle ensued. Li Yuanji was shot and fell from his horse. Known as the Shu Wo Gate incident, this was the opening move of a coup. Two months later, Li Yuan was forced to relinquish military command and abdicate. Li Shimin was enthroned as Emperor Taizong and chose the era name Zhang Guan. The late Sui dynasty had bequeathed to Li Shimin an empire ruined by war. He needed to restore social order and revive the economy. His first task was to reorganize the government and appoint talented men as his ministers. Li Shimin was experienced in this regard. In 621, while still Prince of Qin, he had set up an academy which recruited talented men. The academy's 18 famous scholars included literati such as Yu Shinnan, Chu Liang, and Chu Jingsong, historians such as Kong Yingda, Lu Deming, and Ya Sunyan, and military experts such as Fang Shunling, Du Rukui, and Du Yan. They were Li Shimin's think tank, so to speak. They assisted in his accession to the throne and served as chief ministers during the Zhengguan era. But compared to the princely court of Qin, the complex imperial court system posed a challenge for Li Shimin. It involved officials from three different backgrounds. One is the Tang Gao Zhu Sichi. 都出生于关陇贵族他们来自民间或者来自基层
，对动乱结束以后，他们的要求，他们的动态，也是了如指掌的。所以说呢，他们能够啊，正确的分析形势。How could these various types of official best serve him in the imperial court? Soon after his succession, Li Shimin summoned Wei Chun, Chancellor at the time of the Shu and Wu Gate incident. He had advised and staunchly supported the late Crown Prince Li Jianchang. Sternly, Li Shimin asked Wei Zheng why he had driven a wedge between the three imperial brothers. Wei Zheng replied calmly, "If the Crown Prince had followed my advice, he would not have been killed." Hearing this, the officials broke into a sweat. But Li Shimin appreciated his courage and frankness. Rather than punishing him, Li Shimin immediately promoted him to an important position. In return, Wei Zheng offered his advice and frank criticism to Li Shimin on many occasions. Wei Zheng's feature is he understands the imperial theory, understands the history of history, understands the social situation. 这样一个人是站得高看得远的，所以他在贞观治国方针的制定，在帮助唐太宗做一个明君这些方面发挥了非常重要的作用。李世民 accepted Wei Zheng's advice, always to listen to both sides of the story before you judge. He was open to advice and criticism. Many admonishments were given by officials such as Wang Gui, Dai Zhou, Ma Zhou, and Zhang Xuanzu, as well as his wife, Empress Zhang Sun. Even Feng Doyi, infamous for his servile flattery of Emperor Yang of Sui, remonstrated with Li Shimin. During the twenty or so years of his reign, more than thirty people offered him advice. Wei Zheng did so on more than 200 occasions. This advice played an important role in improving the administration of the imperial court and helped the emperor to make wise decisions. He realized that the emperor has a desire to harm the country. One is the desire to harm the country. You think the emperor is high and high. He may want to do what he wants to do. 那就有可能你影响决策呀、啊，而且可能会导致决策失误，而使得国家处于危亡的境地。Two months after Li Shimin had violently seized power, officials from far and wide passed through the Shu and Wu Gate. They came from all directions to take part in a debate about lessons from the past for successful governance. The emperor presided over this initiative to achieve national prosperity and social harmony, but ranks quickly closed around two opposing views. 那当时，以山东士族，封德仪为代表的这一派，他们认为，人心坏了，老百姓这个民心大坏，要继续实行高压政策。因为你知道，封德仪他们这些家族在隋末的动荡当中是受打击的对象，他们是还乡团，他们要反攻倒算。可是以魏征为代表的所谓的山东豪杰、普通地主阶级出身的官僚，他们是在瓦岗寨走过来的，他们是反隋的力量，他了解山东河北地区的民间的动向，他认为大乱之后民心思治。就像一个人渴久了喝什么都是甜的，饿饿久了吃什么都香一样。长期经过战乱的百姓，他们希望能够安定下来，过稳定的生活，过安定的日子。How to carry out the great matter of government? The emperor hoped to learn lessons from previous dynasties. Why did the once prosperous and powerful Sui dynasty collapse within less than forty years? He gave three main reasons to explain why Emperor Yang of Sui was killed. First, he built too many lavish palaces. Second, he collected beautiful women and was wanton. Third, he was obsessed with warfare. Li Shimin was amazed by the power of the people. 
On one hand, to create prosperity for the Sui dynasty, and on the other, to bring it crashing down. He clearly understood the relationships that tethered a nation and its people, a ruler and his people, so closely. He said, If there is no law, if there is no law, if there is no law, then there is no law. 我们从陈可谓可以看出来，这显然是从隋末隋末的这样的一个灭亡的这个教训中间，以及传统文化中间了，这得出了一个结论。就这句话就是说什么呢？皇帝是老百姓，因为你有道推举出来的。如果你无道，老百姓就可以推掉。To avoid the failures of the Sui dynasty, Li Shimin often conferred with his ministers on how best to govern. In a famous analogy, he compared the people to water and the ruler to a boat. Water can carry a boat or capsize it. The ruler and his people were likewise interdependent. If a ruler harmed the interests of his people, they would overthrow him. He believed that a ruler must take his people's hearts as his own, putting their interests first. Guided by such a philosophy, he aimed to calm the people with kindness. He implemented Jinguanzhu Zhe, the virtuous outlook of his governance in a number of detailed policies. Discussions between the emperor and his officials were recorded in the Essentials of Government of the Jinguan Era by the historian Wu Jing. These would be passed down through future generations. A fair society would rely upon the rule of law and the guarantee of justice. Li Shimin asked Zhang Sun Wu Ji and Fang Shun Ling to edit his father's law code and formulate a new one. Nineteen ministers and legal experts compiled the Tang Lu Shu Yi, the 12 volume Tang Code, with a 30 volume commentary. This became the basis for the legal codes of later dynasties. But the enforcement of laws would be more important than their codification. Emperor Tai Tsung insisted on equality before the law, not accepting relatives or close friends, princes or officials. In 634, the ninth year of the Zhengguan era, Gao Tingsheng, commander in chief of the armed forces in Yanzhou Dao, was punished by General Li Jing for disobeying an order. Gao was sentenced to death. Commuted to exile on the border, Gao's supporters petitioned Li Shimin to intervene, since Gao Tingsheng had served him when he was Prince of Qin. Li Shimin refused, saying that all must obey the law. If I pardoned him, others who also served well would then take the law lightly. Li Shimin was a firm bulwark of the law. This was uncommon in ancient China, where the emperor's word was law. 唐朝这个法律中间，我们发现一个特点，它前面的除了总则这一类的，以及关于这个皇宫啊、皇帝这一类的这个规定以外，首先是直治律，而是像盗贼、贼盗啊或者什么，就跟老百姓有关系的，以前镇压老百姓的那些条例都在后头。这说明一个什么问题？法律首先是管官吏的，首先是管官吏的，你。你一定要，你做了官，一定要遵守法律，一定要按照法律的规定要求去，去办好你分内的事情。The rule of law had to be enlightened. Li Shimin stressed that the law should proceed cautiously and with lenience. Five years into his reign, he decreed that only the central government could impose the death penalty. He also set stringent rules for the fair review of sentences. He once interrogated the prisoner who faced the death penalty. Prior to the execution, he had the prisoner released and asked him to return for his punishment the following year. He then released all such prisoners across the empire and asked them to do the same. Unprompted and unforced, all 390 prisoners voluntarily returned on time. 
he was moved by compassion and pardoned them all. On the 21st day of the first lunar month throughout the Junquan era, Li Shimin would remove his dragon robe, don plain clothes and shoes, and plant rice seedlings. Attracting a huge crowd, this ritual demonstrated the importance of agriculture for the empire. Li Shimin was one of the few emperors to perform this ritual. And in the third year of his reign, he restored the rice planting ceremony that had been abandoned for hundreds of years. This was much welcomed by the people who left Chang'an virtually empty to witness it.要进行这种仪式的话那必须调集这个军调集这个调集这个府兵来来充当仪仗但这个时候正好是春耕的时候所以说为了不耽误生产为了不不影响这个农民啊这个进行生产就没有去调集这些调集这些农民来充当仪
the Gertuks or Tuja, north of China, captured many Han Chinese. A number of Chinese also fled northward to escape war. During the Emperor Gaotzu's reign, early in the seventh century, the population decreased to about two million, less than a quarter of that under the sway. Li Ximin understood the need to reverse this dire situation. Under his population policy, boys could marry from the age of 20 and girls from 15. The birth of sons was rewarded and those who could not afford to get married received government aid. Officials were assessed on marriage and population growth rates in their regions and promoted or demoted accordingly. Li Ximin's population policy encouraged the ancestors of today's Yuan Jiaxun villages to migrate back from the north. Their favorite play is called Chen Kun Dai. Li Ximin is praised in it. Population is the most precious asset for political stability and serves as a key criterion for good governance. By around 650, the third year of Li Ximin's son, Emperor Gaozong's reign, the population neared 20 million with 3.8 million registered households. This was almost twice as much as during the Jinguan era. Li Ximin's policies helped to restore economic and social stability to the empire. By around 630, the Guangzhou region enjoyed bumper harvests and many emigrants returned. Over the next decade or so, the Shandong region suffered no flood or drought damage. And in many years, harvests were rich. Having dealt with internal economic and social matters, Li Ximin began to focus on border defense. In the second year of his reign, 628, he defeated Liang Shidu, who occupied Liang in present-day northern Shanxi and western Inner Mongolia. With this victory, he reunited China. Two years later, General Li Jing defeated the eastern Tuzhou and brought peace to the northern border. Over the following decade, the two Yuhun, Gaocheng, Gurusa and Kucha in the northwest were either defeated by Tang armies or surrendered to them. The Tang Empire's western frontier was now stable and included the mighty Tian Shan Mountains. Although the Tang army was strong, Li Ximin believed that wars would damage his hard-won stability and benefit no one. Only by his policy to win people by virtue and treat them as equals would those northwestern peoples submit willingly to the empire. In the winter of 641, the 15th year of the Zhengguan era, 16-year-old Princess Wunchan donned fine clothes and readied herself to depart for Tubo, the vast ancient Tibetan empire. Intelligent, beautiful, and well-educated, she was going to marry its ruler, Song Sen Gampo. Emperor Tai Sung's marriage alliance policy was at work. It delivered a beautiful bride to the Tibetan ruler. And with her came 
advanced agricultural skills and handcrafted artifacts, as well as craftsmen and musicians. The princess felt doubtful and curious in equal measure about her destination. After a month-long journey, she was escorted into Tibet. Her entourage introduced to the region Han Chinese agricultural methods and skills in weaving, construction, paper manufacture, and metallurgy. Today, the route she traveled to Tibet bears witness to the story of the Princess Bride and also serves as an example of the spread of Chinese culture. Chi 将领，部落首领得到重用。Shanxi's Jialing Mausoleum Museum has a collection of pottery figurines of officials, some Han Chinese and others from ethnic minorities. After the defeat of the Eastern Tuzhe, most of the Eastern Turkic Khaganate's people remained settled in their own land. Their social norms and cultural customs were maintained. Others were moved within the Tang borders. Some were appointed officials or even made generals. The same policy was also applied to other ethnic minorities. There were stone statues of 14 non-Han Chinese dukes. There were leaders of ethnic minorities who surrendered to Emperor Taizong. Those on the western side were leaders from present-day Xinjiang, Tibet, Qinghai, Gansu, and elsewhere in Xiyu, the western regions. Those on the eastern side were Tuzhe, that is Turkic, as well as Korean and South Asian leaders. These stone statues which once stood in the mausoleum serve as evidence of the emperor's ethnic policies. Tang 唐高宗没有答应，就把他们的这个像刻在石头上，为唐太宗守灵。The Tang Dynasty ruled over a powerful multi-ethnic empire. It fascinated people from many ethnic and cultural backgrounds. They submitted themselves to Emperor Taizong and acclaimed him as Heavenly Kagan or ruler of the world. The Tang Empire attracted people from many different cultures and exerted powerful influence over neighboring states. In terms of size, power, stability, unity, and multi-ethnic character, the Tang was unprecedented. During the Jinguan era, Tang territory exceeded that of Western Han. In its 14th year, 640, it expanded to the East China Sea, west to present-day Xinjiang, south to today's Vietnam, and north to Mongolia. The Tang Empire became the most powerful in the world. Under Emperor Taizong, 
The Tang Empire stabilized society, enjoyed economic growth, and expanded. Leaders of ethnic minorities submitted to the emperor, and people of diverse ethnicities lived peacefully together. During this period, Chinese culture also flourished. Li Ximin set up a literary institution, the Hongwen Academy, recruited scholars and collected and compiled books. He loved to read history, which he believed influenced the present. Eight out of China's 24 official historical books were compiled during his reign. The books of Jin, Northern Qi, Zhou, Yang, Chen, and Sui, and the histories of the Southern Dynasties and of the Northern Dynasties. Chinese文化 these are the six steeds of Jialing Mausoleum, Chinese stone reliefs of the war horses Li Ximin rode during his campaigns against Sui before he established the Tang Dynasty. They vividly portray the emperor and his horses. However, as emperor, Li Ximin discouraged war and promoted education. He encouraged education programs across the empire and also cultivated himself. He often read through the night and sometimes became so immersed that he would fail to notice the approaching dawn. His efforts and his own example contributed to the development of culture and education during his reign. Tang Taizong to you, Jake, Yu, Su Fa, Hui Hua, Deng Deng, Fang Mian, the Zhong Shi, Sui Jing Guan Yan Jian, Yu, Xia, the Hen Duo, the Wen Hua, the Jin Ping. 所以贞观书法四大家是非常有名的，你像欧阳询啊，包括这个呃褚遂良啊等等这些人，绘画也是这样，严立本、严立德、丹青、大手笔都出现在贞观时期，所以文化建设的成就也是很高的。But all good things must come to an end. A turning point was reached at the start of 643, the seventeenth year of the Zhengguan era. Wei Jing died. This came as a heavy blow to the emperor. He suspended meetings in the imperial court for five days and commanded that all the officials must attend Wei Jing's funeral. On the day of the funeral, Emperor Tai Tsung ascended the western tower of the imperial palace and stood looking down upon the funeral procession. He cried, the men of the past will not return. With whom can I now enjoy the spring view? He greatly missed Wei Zheng and told his court officials, a polished copper mirror lets you keep your clothes neat. In the mirror of history, you can learn from the past. Using a person as a mirror reveals your own strengths and weaknesses. I used all three of these three mirrors now that Wei Zhang has passed away, I have lost a mirror. He is the whole of the Zhengguan era. His head artist, we can even say this. Tang Taizong is very clear about this. He has been in many occasions with the Emperor. The most important thing to me with me is the most important thing to me with me is Fang Xuanling and Zhang Song Wuji. But the most important thing to me with me is the most important thing to me with 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 me. After the death of Wei Zheng, who would call the emperor to account? In his absence, the dazzling brilliance of the Zhengguan era gradually began to tarnish. Besides Li Ximin's most prized mirror, other able supporters also died. Empress Zheng Sun in 636, and loyal court officials, including three chancellors, Du Ruhui, 
in 6.30 and Fan Shun Ling and Ma Zhou both in 6.48. Li Ximin became less amenable and his rule faltered. Tsingguan In his later years, Li Ximin's health grew poor. The deposition of the disloyal crown prince, Li Changchen, in 643, and the failure in 645 of the campaign to conquer Goga Liao contributed to this. In 649, the 23rd year of his reign, he died at the age of 52. The empire was saddened by his death. Of their own accord, many from ethnic minority communities mourned the passing of the emperor and traveled thousands of miles to pay their respect to him. In accordance with his will, a simple funeral was held and he was buried just seven days after his death. Although less demanding of himself in his later years, he remained well-disciplined and thrifty to the very end. Such was the uncommon virtue possessed by an emperor of generous character who had achieved great things. With his death, the Zhengguan era came to its end. This outstanding period was ushered out in an atmosphere of sorrow. Lisming 所以说在这一方面我觉得他也是他就也就是说他不仅仅是一个政治家提高到国家根本的 virtues were many. He cared about his people. He was willing to accept advice and even more importantly to accept criticism. He was self-reflective and self-aware. He was eager to recruit talented officials and he was frugal and self-disciplined. These were indeed valuable assets for a man who wielded such immense power. He once said that using a person as a mirror reveals one's own strengths and weaknesses. The emperor who used Wei Zheng as his moral mirror performed the same role at his court for his people and over successive generations for those who came after him, whether emperors, officials or common folk. Wu Jing, author of The Essentials of Government in the Zhengguan Era, regarded that time as the greatest of all. In his opinion, the reigns of legendary emperors Yao, Shun, and Yu the Great, and of actual rulers such as King Tan of Shang, Kings Wun and Wu of Zhou, or Emperors Wun and Jing of Han, were not as great as that of the Emperor Tai Tsung of Tang. The wind from the Jinguan era still sings to us, 
remarked the Book of Tongue of this period when Chinese society was uncommonly harmonious. Its legacy included effective ways to manage the relationships between an emperor and his court officials and with his people, as well as successful methods to cultivate and enrich multi-ethnic relations. Unlike the fleeting wind, Emperor Taizong and his reign have left an enduring impression in the hearts and minds of the Chinese people.